Bruch Maboyim, thank you for coming. Tonight we're going to continue with our uh, series of Gematrias. This is the 12th lecture, and we're up to the letter in the Hebrew alphabet, the 10th letter, which is called the Yud. So 10 is the basis of the Jewish number system. Each of the first 10 digits is assigned a distinctive name. No new designation is provided for subsequent numbers following 10. For example, number 11 in Hebrew is Achad Asar, literally 1 plus 10. It has no independent name. Later groupings are modeled based on their identity as multiples of 10. For example, 30 is Shaloshim, based on the plural of the number 3. 40 is Arbaim, based on the multiple form of Arba, which is 4. Only when reaching new denominations such as a hundred or a thousand are different names used. Ten acts as a point of closure, like the full number of digits on a man's hands and feet. All different parts combine to reach an integrated entity, an all-encompassing complete set. In fact, in Latin, the prefix deca means ten. A decade refers to ten years. The metric measurements used uses units in multiples of 10. So the 10th letter in the Aleph base, the Hebrew alphabet, is a Yud, which is barely larger than a dot and cannot be divided in component parts. It alludes to God who is one and indivisible. The Gemara Menachos explains that God created the universe with the letters Yud and He, which formed the divine name of God called Ka. Again, I'm not pronouncing it exactly how it is, but with a hey. With the letter Yud, he created the world to come, while with the letter He, he created this world. The smallness of the letter Yud represents the metaphysical. It is the only letter that is suspended in midair. As Maral of Prague explains, its smallness lies in its smallness lies the essence, which is devoid of such physical ballast as space, time, or matter. So this implies that greatness is achieved through humility. God taught this lesson to Moshe Rabbeinu and the Jewish nation by choosing the mountain of Sinai, a small and unimpressive mountain, to give the Jewish nation his Torah. As the first Mishnah in Pirkei Avos begins, Moshe Kibbal Torah is Sinai, and Moshe received the Torah from Sinai. It should say from God. The wording teaches us that Moses, our teacher, learned about humility from the fact that God chose it, the mountain of Sinai, to give the Torah to the Jewish nation. And in this vein, God chose the smallest of nations, Israel, as his chosen people. The innate quality of ten as a complete set finds ample expression through the divine act of creation, the unfolding of Jewish history from Adam, Adam to Avram Avinu, Abraham our father, and miraculous wonders of the exodus from Egypt, leading to the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai and culminating in the coming of Mashiach, may he come quickly in our time, the Messiah. God used ten utterances in the creation of the universe. This parallels the whole of creation being composed by the ten divine emanations, which are Chokmah, wisdom, Bina, understanding, Dat, knowledge, Chesed, kindness, Gvura, severity, tiferet, beauty, netzach, eternity, hod, splendor, yesod, foundation, and malchut, kingship. The first generations of mankind were themselves grouped into two sets of ten. There were the first ten generations, from Adam to Noach, and ten generations from Noach to Avram. It was only in the merit of Avram that the whole of creation was established, and God brought also ten plagues upon the Egyptians in Egypt. It is significant that the name of God and Israel both begin with the Yud. For God and Israel are, are fundamental to creation. Yud is the first letter in the four-letter name of God of mercy, the yud ke vav ke. The Jewish nation are known by four names, all of which begin with the Yud. Yaakov, Jacob, Yisrael, Israel, Yehuda, Judah, and Yeshuran. The Gemara tells us that 10 symbolizes perfection and completeness. Every number until 10 is viewed as basically incomplete. God's presence resides among 10 and no activity of sanctification can take place 
with less than 10 men. The number 10 is used to present a spiritual full set. The number 10 basically represents Kedusha, sanctity. 10 is connected with prayer. We are told the Shekhinah will rest only where there is a quorum of 10 men called a Minyan. Whenever 10 men pray together, they are assured that God Almighty will hear their prayers. The Gemachi of the word Ava, I will come, is 10, alluding to a minion of 10 men based on a Baal HaTurim. The Kaddish, one of the holiest prayers that we say, has 10 words of prayer, praise to God Almighty. When the Kohanim, the priests, bless us, which is, which is called Birchat Kohanim, when they do it, they raise their two hands and stretch out their ten fingers. And God's blessings flows through their fingers and rests upon the congregation. Man is composed of a physical body created from the earth and a soul that emanates from heaven. The morale states that there are ten distinct elements related to man's creation. Five of which connect to man's physical dimension and five which connect to spiritual matters that are part of man's transcendent dimension. There are ten major parts of man's body which parallel this division. Two eyes, two ears, and a tongue. These are considered the spiritual parts of man. Two feet, two hands, and the sexual organs are the five that are closer to a physical side of man. The activities of the eyes, sight, ears, hearing, and tongue speech do not need any physical contact with the material world in order for them to function. Sight is a, is a perception of things which are distant from man and with which he has no tangible interaction. Hearing is also a perception of things with which man does not have any, have any direct contact. Speech is also an activity connected to the spiritual and intellectual dimensions of man. The hands, feet, and sexual organs are connected to more physical activities of man and are considered closer to the earth. There are ten fingers and ten toes in a man's body. We also find in the Ten Commandments, the Aserat Dibrot, this division between heaven and earth. The first five commandments are connected to heaven, being Adam Lamakum, between man and God. And the last five commandments are connected to earth, being Adam Adam between man and man. A human being belonging to both the heaven and the earth is a composite of both. The only one of the five books of the Torah that relates to, to dreams is the book of Bereshit, the first book of the Torah. In it, we find ten dreams. The dream of Abimelech and Sarah, Jacob's ladder, Jacob's speckled sheep, Lovin's told not to harm Yaakov, Yosef and the sheaves, again an allusion to his ten brothers, who had come down from, to Egypt and bowed down to him. Yosef and the sun, moon, and the stars. Yosef and the cupbearer. Yosef and the baker. Paro and the cows. And Paro and the sheaves. Number 10 is also related to what we, the animal called the Pura Duma, a red heifer. The first one was brought by Moshe Rabbeinu in the desert. The second by Ezra, the sofer when he brought the Jews back from Bubble, which was the end of the first exile of the Jews, again bringing them back to be built the second temple. There were another seven that were brought during the second temple era, and the tenth will be brought by Mashiach Sitkenu, may he come quickly in our time. There were ten tests given to Avram Avinu. He was able to achieve by himself what all previous generations had failed to do. The Zohar states that, with, that uh, he, Avram Avinu, was a Gilgal, a reincarnation of Adam, first man. Avram Avinu was able to complete the mission that was given originally to Adam, and in his merit, the Jews in the desert were forgiven for testing God ten times. There are ten songs recorded in Tanakh, in the Torah. Adam composed the first, Psalm 92, Mizmor Shir Lioma Shabbos. Moshe composed Az Yashir. The Jews in the desert composed the Song of the Well. Moshe, before he died, sang the portion of Hazinu. Yoshua sang, and the sun stood still in the sky. Devorah and Barak sang. Hannah sang her song. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dov and Amalek sang for the miracles that God did for him. 
Shlomo sang the song of Shir Hashirim, and the tenth song will be sung by the Jewish people when God Almighty redeems them from the present exile. The harp of Mashiach will then have ten strings. The symbolism of Moshe's height is said to be ten cubics. It was accents, actuates his persona as a public servant. He was equal to and equated with the entire Jewish community. Moshe was the first of ten people in Tanakh who were called Ish Elohim, a man of God. Moshe prayed to God to forgive his people, pleading, Yigdal na koach adonai, let the power of my Lord be great. The Yud in Yigdal was, was to appeal to God to remember the ten trials that Abraham withstood and to spare his descendants' punishments and his merit. The number ten is associated with Mashiach, the Messiah. With ten expressions of Hallel, praise, Dovon Amalek, King David concluded Tehillim, which speaks of the redemption that will be brought by Mashiach. With Psalm 150, Dovon Amalek concluded his book of Psalms, Tehillim. There are ten praises that are expressed in the Psalm of 150. The first five are related to things that are godly, infinite, while the second set of five are related to man, finite. The book of Psalms was written with ten synonyms of praise. There are ten authors in the Tehillim. The tenth blessing in the weekday Amida, Tika B'Shofar Godol L'Cheiruteinu, that we pray for God to blow the shofar, the great shofar, for our uh, redemption. Again, the first of the, for the ram that was brought in lieu of Yitzchak at the arcade of the binding, where you're being brought by Avram Avinu. The f left side, the left horn of that ram was blown on the Mount Sinai when the Torah was given by God Almighty. And the right one will be blown, the great show for our freedom, alluding to Mashiach, when Mashiach will come. There are ten nations whose land were given to the four, our forefathers as an inheritance. Seven of these nations were given to the Jewish nation when they entered the land of Israel with Yoshua. God commanded the children of Israel to conquer and destroy them. They are the Chitim, Girgoshim, Amorim, Kenanim, Perizim, Chivim, and Yuvusim. The last three will be given with the final redemption. Moshe, before his death, was able to view the land of the seven nations, but he was not shown the land of the Kenites, Kenizites, and Kadmonites. The Mishkan was inaugurated on the eighth day of dedication and ten crowns were given to it on that day. The curtain around the Mishkan in the desert was composed of ten curtains made up by combining two sets of five curtains. In the first temple, Shlomo Melech, King Solomon, made ten menorahs and ten golden tables. Pirkeiovot reports that there were ten miracles that were performed continually in the Bayat Rishon in the first temple. There were ten things that were created at the twilight of creation, and after eating from the tree of knowledge, God cursed the serpent and Eve with ten curses. Ten righteous men could have saved Sodom from destruction. God came down to earth ten times, and ten brothers sold Yosef into slavery. Ten blessings were given to Yaakov by Yitzchak when he went to Lovin's house. Ten spies gave an evil report about the land. There are ten times in the Torah where we are commanded to give tzedakah, charity. There were ten lions in the den with Daniel, the prophet. There were ten kings to have ruled over the known world. Ten Jewish, non-Jewish nations that originally occupied the Holy Land. Haman had ten sons that were hung. The ten levels of impurity. Ten biblical famines. Ten measures of quality such as wisdom and beauty that descended into the world. There are 10 expressions of prayer. 10 tribes followed Yeruvim ben Nevat and made up the kingdom of Israel. The Rambam enumerates 10 species of angels. Yom Kippur is the 10th of Tishrei. It is the final day of the 10 days of tshuva, of repentance, which is the holiest day of the year. There are three themes on Rosh Hashanah, Malchiot, Zichronos and Shofros, kingship, remembrances, and blowing. Each one is expressed in the Amida, the standing prayer of the Rosh Hashanah, with ten verses. 
Every year, all men over the age of 20 were obligated to give a half shekel as ransom for their soul, which consisted of 10 gera, a tradition which we symbolically still follow today. A farmer would take 10% of his crop from Miser Rishon, the first tithing, that would be given to the Le Le Levite. For six years, this would happen. He would then take another 10% from Miser Shani, second tithing, on the first, second, fourth, and fifth years, and bring it to Jerusalem to be consumed there. On the third and sixth years, he would not do Miser Shani, he would give the 10% to the poor. The seventh year, with Shemitah and the land was left fallow and ownerless. Often the final tenth component makes something holy to God. When a farmer takes what's called Meister Behema, tithing of his animals that were born that year, he takes all kosher animals that were born that year and then passes them through a narrow chute. And every tenth animal is sanctified and must be brought to the temple. Yaakov even tithed his sons. Levi was the Meister of his sons. The tenth highest degree of sanctity was the Kodesh HaKadoshim, the Holy of Holies. The dimensions of the Holy of Holies was 10 cubits long by 10 cubits wide. It was the permanent dwelling place of the Ten Commandments, which were kept in the Ark, which was 10 hand breaths high, and also the two Keruvim, the childlike figures that were on top of the Ark, rose to a height of 10 hand breaths. The Mezuzah, which we place on our doors posts, is at a minimum height of 10 hand breaths. A husband is duty bound to honor 10 marital obligations to his spouse. Bread, Torah tells us, is the staple of life. And on the Shabbat, when we make our blessings on bread, we have in mind that God gave us this bread through 10 actions, from planting to baking. We commemorate the fact that God created this world with 10 sayings, we place our fingers on the two loaves of challah, and we say a blessing which has 10 words. 40, connecting to the 40 days that it takes to form a fetus in the womb, and the 40 days that Moshe Rabbeinu was on the mountain to receive the Torah from God Almighty. And with the help of God, may we use our conception to serve him with Torah and mitzvot. Thank you very much for coming, and I hope you enjoyed. Next week, we'll continue with number 11. God bless and have a good job.